Hi. If you're looking to switch from one EOVim configuration to another, then you've come to the right place. There have been other techniques to do this, but they come with their pros and their cons. So buckle up as I give a demo and then dig into how it works. Okay, so if I launch NeoVim, I'll get my default configuration, which in my case is a fresh install of NeoVim Nightly with zero config. But let's try a new command called nvimS, which stands for NeoVim Switcher. Then a prompt is displayed listing our known configs. And you can use your arrow keys and or control N or control P to navigate the list. Here we'll pick LazyVim and voila. Here is NeoVim running our isolated LazyVim config. Let's try that again, but this time search for Chad and pick the NVChad configuration. And boom, there we go. And we can also pass arguments to the command. We'll open up the package JSON and we'll pick kickstart. And there it is. I've also set up the control A key to launch NVMS. I'll show how all of this works very soon. And I'll pick NVChad. So let's say you want to immediately jump to LazyVim. Then you could use the NVim lazy command. And boom, you're running NeoVim with the LazyVim config. Or you could type NVim dash and then tab to cycle through the different choices available. And I'll pick lazy again and open the package.json file. So at this point, you might be wondering how I'm doing all of this. Am I switching branches in Git? Am I overriding HDG config home? Am I overriding all the XDG environment variables? Nope, none of those. Although I have tried some in the past and each have their downsides until now. It so happens that there's a new feature that launched in NeoVim nightly called nvim underscore app name. The nvim app name variable controls the directory NeoVim will look for and auto create in the various XDG parent directories which makes what I'm doing at the beginning of this video very straightforward. So let's go and add another config to show how it's all put together. Okay, so we're going to add Astro NVim to our set of configs. We'll go to the Astro NVim website, click installation, and copy the clone the repository snippet. And we'll come back to our terminal and paste the contents. I'll remove the NVim bit and tweak the destination of the clone. Instead of nvim, we'll call it astro nvim, which will be what we end up using as our nvim underscore app name. And now let's open up our zshrc file to see where the magic happens. But before we do, if you found this video helpful, please boop the like button so it can spread to more people. It really does help the channel, so thank you. Okay, so the magic. Well, it isn't all that magical after all. I basically have a few aliases to handle quickly getting to a config and a function that uses fzf and then sets the nvim underscore app name and that's it. Well, I do have a tiny bit of logic to test if the user canceled out of fzf and a bit to set config to an empty string if the default option was selected. Other than that, there's not much going on. Oh, and there's the bind key to make control a kick off nvims. Compared to previous techniques, this is a much nicer solution and solves some of the problems that other techniques suffered from, like unsynced plugins, XDG issues when launching apps from NeoVim, etc. Okay, now let's add support for Astro NVim. I'll duplicate the NVim Chad line and change it from NVim Chad to NVim Astro, and then change the NVim app name to Astro NVim which maps to the folder name of where we clone the repo. And then I'll add an entry for Astro NVim in the items array. So it'll be listed in the FZF prompt. Okay, I'll save and source my ZHRC config. And I'll try NVimS again. And there is Astro NVim as an option. Once I select it, it'll be pointing to the new config folder and start to sync all the plugins since it's a fresh install. And when it's done, we can exit and relaunch to see the fancy splash screen. And as I showed before, you can tab complete using the aliases, and that works too. And the cool thing is the native nvim command launches your default config, so you could keep those separate as well. Note, unlike my current setup where default is an empty config, 
I'd probably keep your default to whatever config you use most and use the alternate ones as variations for different needs or possibly areas to experiment. So I hope you found this content helpful. I'm already having fun using this and swapping between configs as I try out new things and experiment. Please leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you think. And until next time, keep learning.